Okay, so I'm just going to do a real quick uh, overview of some of the concepts that I think are really important in this picture. As Oren was saying, this, the current change from the Department of Parks and Recreation to the Department of Enterprise Services, which, as he said, needs to be what they call self-sustaining, economically self-sustaining. In other words, it has to pay for itself, so it has to make money, right? So it is taking away from being a public park. It is taking Thomas Square out of the purpose that it was originally placed in the 1850s, you know, by the Ali'i, for this purpose in dedication to La Ho'i Ho'i'ea, which we are at right now, you know, and it is being put into a money generating model, you know, which, uh, which is to be flavored with air. And um, let me talk about that just a little bit. Okay, so as I'm sure, as was covered very well by uh, Baron and by Oren, this place has a very, very strong connection to this holiday, La Ho'i Ho'i Ea, right? La Ho'i Ho'i Ea, the return of Ea, of sovereignty. Now, this is very, very, very important because we're talking about not only the day that the British did the right thing by restoring the sovereignty of the kingdom which they had, you know, wrongfully taken, which the United States has yet to do, but also it was acknowledging the concept that was very well articulated by Kaui Keo'uli that day, very famously, right? Which is, ua mau ke ea o ka aina i ka pono, right? That is the theme for la ho'i ho'i ea, right? For the ho'i ho'i of the ea is ua mau, to continue on endlessly without being able to stop. The air, the life breath, the sovereignty, Oka'aina, of the land, of all of the land, Ikopono, of right in righteousness, right? So, the reason that I bring this up in relation to this topic, right, is that, you know, Oren had mentioned about um, the oppression repeatedly of the houseless at this place. Now, he and I and others come here every single week and we feed people. Why do we do that? You know, I mean, there's lots and lots of people who are who are houseless and who don't have um, who don't have food or don't have shelter, but we come here every single week, every Sunday we are here, you know, and and others too, and we're feeding people and we're giving them the things that they need um, that they can make shelter from. Why is that? It's because of Pono, and the reason for that. Fundamentally, we need to go back further than the first La Ho'i Ho'i Ea. We need to go back to the day that Kalele Iki hit Kamehameha over the head with a paddle, right? And why did he do that? He did that because he was a Makainana who was being oppressed by power that did not have the right to oppress him, right? And so what did he do? He picked up his fishing paddle and he whacked the guy, right? <laughs> and from that comes our first law, our first law of the kingdom, which is kanawai mamalahoi. It means that the 
you know, that everyone without power is to be protected from those who have power and may abuse it. And so when you go to those people who have the least power, and in this case, we're talking about a lot of people. Some are Kanaka, and let me tell you, there's some people with some deep genealogies who come here. There are also people from all over the place. There are refugees from the United States. There are people from other lands. There are all kinds of people. They're all to be treated the way that our Ali'i treated people in the kingdom, which is with Pono, with Aloha, and with by taking care of them. And that's how you have a right to be a government. If you don't take care of the people, you don't have a right to be a government. And so, that is the concept of Pono as far as political power goes. Fundamentally, fundamentally, and this is universal. You know, this is to our kingdom, but it's also a universal concept. Pono is determined by correct treatment of those who have less power than you do. And so, this part plan, right? This part plan. The plan is to block this entire area off in order to turn it into a commercial zone. Honestly, that is what they're doing. They're turning it into a self-sustaining commercial zone, not for the purpose that the Ali'i gave it to the people of Hawaii, but for the purpose of making money so that it can be self-sustaining. And I went to one meeting and in, or very early on with the, the developers of the, you know, the planners who were developing the park and the words that they used were world-class destination. They wanna make this a world-class destination. That, those were their words, okay? And that is what they're standing on. And, you know, when you talk about world-class destination, they're not talking about a destination for you or me, okay? They are talking about destination for those people who come from outside and who have money to make the park, quote-unquote, self-sustaining, right? Who will pay the money. Now, they don't care. They're, they're happy if you or I wander through here. They're happy if there's a statue of Kaui Keauuli that everybody can go, oh, look how wonderful, you know, just like how they do to the queen statue behind the state legislature right while they're making all their have our rules and stealing land and stealing water there's the queen looking at them and they're quite happy you know people go there and they take pictures and you know fine as far as they're concerned fine if there's a statue of Kau Ikeauli fine if there's a big plaque telling the story of Thomas Square fine if there's a big huge Hawaiian flag flying you can have the most giant flag in the world. You can have a flag as big as this park flag and they don't care as long as they're making money and as long as they keep their power. So I'm gonna say that I, for one, will not trade the essence of Ea for the image of Ea. Ew. Ew. So, I want everybody to keep their eyes out because this is a very intense thing that's coming up. You know, they're talking about blocking this entire area off. And that's, they're blocking it off to the people who live here. They're blocking it off to the people who practice culture here. They're blocking it off to everyone. Because I'll tell you right now, they don't really want us here. They don't really want us here now. They would rather have their people doing this, and they proved that because they had their own La Hoi Ea. And the only reason they're not doing it right now is because it was a complete farce and a flop. Honestly, it was ridiculous. I was there, being chased by police. And, um, you know, some of, some of the others of us were here too, on that day, and Pono was here, you know, and those of us who witnessed it can pretty much say, I think it was, it was, it was so incredibly lame 
that they can't do it because they don't know how to do it. They would love to have this La Ho'i Ho'i Ea be their little gem, their little cultural gem that they can show, oh yes, we support sovereignty, we support culture, we support history while they are kicking the shit out of people who have no home. And we're talking Hawaiians who have no home. Ew, ew. You know, while they are breaking the kanavai that supports our land, they will be very happy to make this La Hoi Hoi Ea the gem that they can say, oh, we support it, we sponsor it, we, you know, we're, we're totally behind it, blah, 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 blah while they send the police after us. After the people who are walking through here, who you will see, who live here because they have nowhere else to be. While they are kicking out the people who this park was made for. So I just want people to think about that, okay? Mahalo. Eo, Eo, can we can we ha hear it for Lalani? Thank you. Eo, Eo, Eo. Let's hear it for Baron.